Welcome back to the channel and the electric mini build. On the last episode, the guys got this mini to this state and obviously got it repainted. And now, Nick, what are we doing this time? We. Well, you and Gary. Me and Gary are going to get this whole kit fitted into the car and hopefully have it driving off the ram. But before we do that, I'd like to show you how Felton build the battery packs in-house. As Nick has just said, it's time to get the battery packs built. Lots of bits here, lots of modules, and lots of putting things together with the user guide. And Gary, my lovely assistant, is actually going to put the battery pack together because I am not. So we're going to hand it over to the Felton specialist who's assembled loads and loads and loads of these battery packs. Probably what you want now. Um, this is kit 25. So yeah, we've built, um, yeah, 25 pairs. So Same. yeah, this will be like, this is 49 and 50. So yeah, we've built That's a few. That's an awful lot of electric minis on the road. Yes, it's great to see as well. <laughs> so I'm going to hand over to Gary now and he's going to assemble this front pack and then I'm going to come back just before you start the rear pack. And take all the glory for and it. And take all the glory, of course. Yeah. I'll leave you to it, Gary. All right, thanks very much. Look at Gary Cow. I didn't realize he could move so fast. So he's getting the modules onto the cooling plates on his special jig. And then he's going to get them into the battery pack after fitting the copper nickel plated buzz bars and testing the BMS harness. After this, he's now moving on to getting the final module into the battery pack as it's on a different angle to the rest getting the high voltage junction box built and moving on to fit in the Orion battery management system. He then gets all the cover plates on with a bucket load of sick of flats because none of us want water getting inside that battery pack as batteries and waters do not mix very well together. You saw the shiny plate and that is the finishing touch for the front battery box for the mini that Gary has spent so long building. Yes. And you're now gonna move on to the rear box. Yes, started. So get onto that. Just peel off the sticker. Make sure you put it in the right place. Over here, yeah? Yeah, yeah, you can take <laughs> it back off. <laughs> uh, just about there, make sure it's straight. Put that on. I ain't going anywhere. Is it straight? It's straight. Oh, it's first then. Right, I'll let you crack on with the rear box then, Gary. Here Gary goes again, moving even faster. He's got a special thing for lifting the front box off and out of the way. Make sure we use that later when we fit it into the front of the car. Now he's building the batteries onto their cooling plates again for the rear box, but these are on a different angle, so they're a different type of cooling plate, getting all the buzz bars in, the BMS lumen and all that sort of stuff. And then he puts on his special high voltage gloves in a minute, so he doesn't hurt himself as this gets pretty damn live at about 150 volts in the rear box alone. That's the rear box now finished by Gary. So that's everything ready to go from a battery pack level. We're gonna head back to Nick now. Now you've seen how the battery packs are built, we're gonna assemble the whole kit into the car. We we'll start with the front subframe because currently there's no weight in the front of the car and if we start from the rear, it may fall off the ramp. Stop being silly, please. So it'll be a nice order for everybody to see, going from the front, working our way back so it's in some sort of order, so easy to follow. Let's get started. How's looking? Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. A little bit more. Nice and easy. Single bolt, and then that on the back for the washer. Right, so sweet. Perfect. Now the subframe is installed into the car. You can see the shipping frame is still attached. We're gonna remove the shipping frame now, but what's very important is not to throw the bolts away that are holding the shipping frame to the subframe, because these are later used to put the sump guard on the bottom to protect the kit. Do not misplace them. Now, they could be replaced if you lost them. They're only just normal off-the-shelf bolts, but they are provided and they're there, so keep them. Okay. Got it? Yeah. frame. The shipping frame is off. This you can now throw in the scrap bin or if you're feeling really nice and you want to recycle and do something good for the planet like building an electric car you could always ship it back to Felton and they can reuse it. Roller coaster wrapped it in that. Yeah. <laughs> Whee! Thank you. 
Sweet. Now the front assembly is in, you'll be left with these two. These are two, this is for the control loom for the whole, uh, the front system. One of these connects to an interior loom, which will go to the bulkhead up here. The other one, which is the one I want to sort now, goes down through a gap here and will connect to a loom that runs from the rear of the kit to the front. Quickly, before we jump under the car to put the HV tray in place, there's a couple of little bits we can connect under here. The brake line has just been connected up to the brake compensator down here. And we have an inertia switch to put in. This is actually an original Rover part that was used on some of the later injection minis. So it's very easy to get hold of. This is in place for, in case of an accident, this will open the contactors and just stop all the HV from being present in the car. So that if any emergency services come to the scene, they can pull the MSD out of the front battery pack very easily by popping the bonnet but this will have already opened all the contactors and there should not be any HV leaving the battery packs. If in a collision, there's a little bearing in there that's come loose and then it's reset like that. Yeah. I will also, whilst I'm here, there's a pink and red one here. This, is for the brake switch, the pressure switch, as mentioned before. Without this, you will have no regenerative braking because this measures the brake pressure and alters the regen on the amount of pressure you put onto the brake pedal. So it's adaptive. Throttle pedal. So we have a Heller throttle pedal. This is a dual hall effect pedal. It has to be a dual hall effect for safety reasons. One value rises whilst the other one falls. If they don't match, uh, then it will not work. It, it, you won't be going anywhere. So if you have a throttle pedal fault, you won't be driving into the car in front or unable to stop. I'm gonna bolt this into the bulkhead now. There is a bracket, which is already been bolted to the car. Um, this does require putting one rivet nut through a hole that already exists in the bulkhead, but I'm gonna bolt this to it now so that you can see. It places onto these three studs and it's fastened with three 10 mil Nylock nuts. Now we have our go pedal. A nice smooth motion, which is very good. You can could build a kit with a, a throttle pot that's driven by cable, but Felton have chose that actually using an electronic pedal is a lot better. The application's smoother, and the readings this gives are to a much tighter tolerance than a lot of other stuff on the market, hence using a genuine Heller pedal. Now that's done, we'll move on to something else. The gear shifter has to go in before the HP tray can be fitted because you need access from under the vehicle to bolt this through the tunnel. This is a lovely tactical switch for a forward and reverse motion, a little lift up for reverse. So it feels good, a good positive shift into your forward gear and your reverse. <laughs> now we have our human under the car to do the nuts. I can just hold the bolt steady at the top. Front of the shifter, the bolt holes are smaller. So there is two different size bolts in this, smaller at the front, larger at the rear. The reason for this isn't because we are lazy. It's because nobody wanted to drill extra holes in the car. If you drill holes in the car, you have trouble registering as electric. So the way the kit is designed is that you drill no extra holes and then the car is completely original and the kit is reversible. So you're not gonna open up any holes that you may need if you ever wanted to return this car to run an ICE engine. The HV tray is now on a transmission jack and assembled. This is gonna be placed onto the bottom of the car. There's a few connections on it to be made. This one is for the shifter, just like that. The one at the front here, this is what's gonna connect into the loom here to communicate between the front and the rear battery packs and system. You have your two HV link cables, which are linking the high voltage battery packs together. And the cable here, it goes to the bottom of the front pack. This is linked to the charger at the rear and a fly off of that for the PTC heater that goes into the cabin. At the rear, at the front and the rear, you have your coolant line connections. 
This is what feeds the coolant down to the onboard charger and DC-DC. That's the connection for the charger. And there is a load of others attached to the end of the loom, which means to poke up through the hole in the bottom of the boot here, which already exists from the original fuel lines. And those connections will be made once the rear end of the kit is installed. So we'll go over them as we do that. But for now, we'll get this bolted up and we'll connect up what we can and we'll go over that as we make the connections so that you can see exactly how everything is going together. The under tray is fitted using these threads here that are poking out the bottom of the floor. These are connected to the rails that the front seats clip down to. And then obviously the brackets at the front will hold on to the lower bolt of the mounts. And at the rear, they hold on to these little tabs here that are on the rear subframe. Sometimes you do drop a nut, but you just pick it up and go again. So now that we've got the HV tray in place, but not fully bolted up, we can actually start looking at um, connecting up the water coolant to the pipes here at the front of the car, which run all the way down to the back to the charger. So we've got this one on the right here as you look, and it goes straight up into the water pump. So the water pump is a Bosch water pump that we use on our builds, um, has a good flow rate and is um, very robust. So we'll join up that one to the water pump, which feeds, feeds through. Then we'll tighten these up in a minute. And then on the other side, we have the return one, and this then goes with this 90 degree silicon pipe here. Uh, still a bit of coolant in there, which is nice. And straight on into the motor. Lovely. So this is the main connection from the front of the vehicle to the rear. So this has power, it has CAN wires, and it has a lot of the control wires and systems that, uh, for brake lights and reverse lights, which we control through our system. So everything comes through here. It goes in here and then that's it nice and locked and everything's waterproof with nice rubber seals around it as well now that's the end of part one of fitting the full bolt in felton kit into the e-bean electric mini now I split up the two parts just because they were getting quite long and there's an awful lot of information to take in on each episode so next episode really soon hit the subscribe button so it tells you when it comes out so you can make sure you watch it and i actually get my hands through it on the next episode by fitting that front battery box with gary and getting these wheels to spin for the very first time so make sure you come back and also leave us a comment and a thumbs up if you like this episode